Hi, welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. This one we're going to look at um, payment and this is important for anybody who's starting a locksmith business or perhaps is even in a locksmith business and maybe we use different methods to you or maybe we might show you something um, interesting or something that might cut your uh, payment system down or might just help you get payment rather than uh, you know having problems. So the first three methods of payment we accept. First one is, um, I'll just give you quickly, is an account, they send you a work order, you then write up an invoice like this, a big A4 invoice, email it off to them, and then they will pay you by a bank transfer. The problem with this one is that you have to receive the email, then you have to uh, do the job, go back to your office, write up the invoice, uh, email it off to them, and then wait for them to pay you. So this is only for our business we only do this when we have to for customers that use our service once or twice a week because if not it's just not worth um, the how do you say the the effort of uh, writing it all up and having somebody in the office follow the payments check the payments and all that sort of stuff so that's only available for account customers now account customers are great they're fine um, and that's what you have to do for a lot of professional um, professional big companies that use you on a regular basis so invoicing is one there's no way around that, it has to be done. Second way we receive payment is um, just straight up cash. You do the job, um, they pay you in cash, the, the invoice is paid right there and then. The third method is uh, FPOS. Now basically this is an FPOS terminal, um, it accepts um, tap, tap and go, uh, MasterCard, savings account, all of those sorts of things. Uh, you simply turn it on, it waits, probably about two minutes to boot up and then you enter in your total you swipe your card um, they enter in their pin number if not they just tap it on the screen and then it prints out one of these nice little receipts like we see here so you get like a little receipt like this now that basically you know says that you paid us there you go there's there's your receipt now that's actually just a terminal receipt it doesn't actually say what you've done or anything like that. So if they do pay like that, uh, you still, if they need a tax invoice, are required to hand write an invoice. So we've gone through a couple of different methods over the years, and this is just a quick little idea of it. First of all, you can buy cheap invoice books. They don't have to cost you a lot of money. You know, this is not an invoice book, but it's a good example. You put one there, you put one there, you write it out, rip it off, they get one, you keep the other for your records. So that's uh, one type of cheap invoice book you can buy from any um, news agency or office works or anything like that. Then you get ones printed up. Now these ones here we got printed up. Um, they're quite good. They're like little checkbooks, you know, so they're, they're quick, they're easy. The reason we got this one printed up in this size uh, was going, well, it was basically uh, copying what another business did. Uh, it wasn't a locksmith business, but it seemed to be a lot easier, a lot smaller to carry, especially in your pocket. You've got to remember that after you've done the job and you want to process the payment, you've got to carry around a machine, an invoice book, um, you know, as well as your tools and all the rest. So a smaller invoice book seemed to be a benefit a lot of the time. I'm saying that too, it doesn't really give a lot um, to the customer. It does give everything you need, it gives you a tax amount, um, gives you a couple of lines to write the address and all of that. So that is a workable product and it did work really well. Um, on saying that, the next size up invoice book is what we used quite a bit as well. And you know, you got your name up the top, you got your description and all your bits down the bottom. Problem I don't like about these invoice books is that just they cost a lot of money. Uh, for one of these books here, we're talking probably about $25, $30. 50 invoices in them, you're talking 80, 90 cents per invoice. So it's a little bit, you know, costly there. Now being, um, you know, 2017, we're moving in, everybody has a smartphone these days. You can't get around it, especially as a locksmith. You need the smartphone to find the addresses. You need the smartphone to, to check your emails. You need the smartphone to, um, you know, use Instacode on the go to get your codes, things like that. So everybody has to have a smartphone. Originally, we liked the little phones that didn't weren't smart and we could drop them and they're very rugged and all that sort of stuff. But unfortunately now, it's, you know, it's part and parcel. As a locksmith, you need the smartphone. So we're moving on to a new system now. And um, this is what we call a Bluetooth uh, thermal printer. Now, what the idea is behind this is, is that, um, once you've done your transaction um, and they've paid either via cash or they've paid by FPOS, which is the main two, if they're paying by invoice, you don't have to worry about it. 
But if they're paying by FBOS and they're, or they're paying by cash and they require a receipt for their uh, purchase, um, the new, well, it is new for us, but a lot of other companies have been doing it for a while. A lot of, a lot of other locksmiths, especially in Australia, aren't doing it. Um, if you've been using it for a long time, it works great, and you've got a particular app or something, please leave it in the comment. But um, this is the kind of the, the move up from these old fashioned books where you've got to write. And I hate to say, uh, when you're trying to decipher some of the writing and things like that, um, you know, they are kind of just scribbled in. Everybody does it. Every single uh, locksmith that's worked for us, um, you know, the writing could be clearer. And also, when you're going over uh, where you've been, if you need to look at your invoice and say, oh, how many locks did I do? Was it a backdoor lock? And your staff or yourself didn't write clearly, it can get very messy for the customer and for you. So that's where this uh, Bluetooth thermal printer comes in. So after you've processed your transaction on your FPOS machine, oh, sorry, just one more thing. So what we're carrying now, instead of carrying the book, is we're carrying these three devices. So, you know, you have this in one pocket and you have these two in another pocket, plus your keys, and you can see it adds up to a little bit of weight. You know, you walk around like, like general pattern, you know, what two big boulders coming out of your hips. Um, but on saying that, it is a lot easier to have a, a thermal printer and print you out a receipt of this paper here. So the idea is that uh, basically you give the customer one, one to say the, you know, the, the money's been taken from the machine, and then you give them another one to actually say, this is what was done, where it was done. And I'll quickly run through and give you a demonstration on how it's done. So assuming that we've done the payment process and um, that's all done, we simply just hold this down. It'll give a little beep, okay? Then we open up our smartphone here. I don't know why the screen's so low there. Uh, sorry, I'll just turn the screen up. For some reason, my screen has, uh, has gone down way too low and you're not gonna be able to see it, so just bear with me a moment. Uh, display, brightness, okay, there we go, full brightness. Okay, so we need to go to our apps now. Apps. Now this app here I'm using, I've tested a few of them and I found this one to be uh, usable. So there are other apps and if you've got a better app um, and it's got a good price and it doesn't cost you anything or anything, please leave it in the description or the comments down below. This one here, Cash Sale POS. There's the logo right there. So you simply just click on that. From there you can create all your items, what you, um, like here I've got service call, um, I've got uh, change locks, but I haven't filled them up as of yet. This is a new system for us too. So the idea behind it is you turn your Bluetooth printer on, you select your service call, and then uh, we'll go to make keys, we'll make keys for a transponder, giving you the total on the side. We'll move to this pay button right, right here, uh, back. Now I have, um, yep, yeah, back, undo. Okay, we'll start again. S service call, that is service call. Uh, change locks, make keys. Now we're gonna make key, we'll just add make key there. So now we have our total right here. We push this little pay button. Now it's gonna ask us how do you wanna pay? This is very important because it writes it all on the invoice, so it keeps a great track record. We've got FPOS or cash. If you put in cash, um, if they give you $200 and you get $20 change, it'll actually tell you on the screen. So there's less errors right there. Uh, so let's just say FPOS for this tra transaction. Now, um, here's a section where you can simply put in all the details and I'll just quickly run through this. So um, back, I'll just select a buyer here, which is just a, just a basically example. So on the first line, I put the mobile phone number. Second line, I put their name. Third line, I put the address. I can also put some additional notes in here as well. Once I'm finished, I push the print button. It's just generating now. Yeah, I push this button here. And, it, and it's printed out. And then I just push OK. That goes into the totals now. Go over here, reports and sales, uh, transactions. They're all my transactions and I can reprint them at a later stage if need be. And they're gonna turn out all perfectly clear and all looking like this. So this is what we have here. And I'll take you through this because it was uh, took me a long time to work out which which actual program will print all this information. We have our tax invoice number on the top. We have who it is. We have the ABN. It's specified and it's written there, tax invoice. We have it here, the buyer. 
including the phone number, which makes it very easy to track a previous sale because it's like a serial number for the customer. They, they say, I've lost my invoice. You say, what's your mobile phone number? You can do a search very quickly and easily. Um, you have the date, which is good. Uh, it would be nice if they had the time in there. Um, it also has credit terms, and which is specified there as paid because you don't want to get paid for an invoice twice and then have to refund it. So it's specified on it that it has been paid. It's uh, stating what it did here. There's a service call, car key transponder, and the method was uh, FPOS. The tax amount um, specifies GST, the GST amount, and the total amount uh, with, without the GST and with the GST. Current notes, you can actually add notes down the bottom. Now, this particular program here is pretty cool. Um, let's just uh, take, for example, that um, it was a different type of um, sale. Okay, so let, let's say a service call here, and let's say that we want to custom write um, a description. Uh, we could just go here and add temporary product. From here, we could um, either talk to it, if this will work, change lock on back door. Okay, Google's not working today. So change lock on back door. Door is broken. Okay, so it won't let us put in much more than a line there, uh, but we can put it in later on anyway. Let's put that in as $40, select our tax. So if you don't want to add tax, you but most of the time you do want with tax. You just select done there. Then we go to the pay, and this is where we'll, we'll put in FPOS there. Invoice now, we're gonna select our, um, sorry, we're gonna select our customer. We're just gonna select a test one here. Now here's where we can put notes down the bottom. Uh, back, door needs to be fixed. Okay, um, lock. works but door moving now the good thing about using a tablet here compared to writing this is um, your spelling you can just simply click you know to correct your spelling um, so it can be a little bit faster when it has those suggested words also it's written clearly what is there so if you're working on something which is um, you know, not 100% and you can only do what you can do. You don't want to be liable for the whole job and they say, oh, you touched it last. So by being able to say, look, um, we fixed the lock, but the door needs repair, by putting this on the invoice, it will save you a lot of time and a lot of liability um, in the long run. So once we're finished there, we simply go to the print button. Um, it can, you can open it up in PDF, you can email it as well. Um, so it's very simple if you want to send it, you can send it to the customer. You don't even need to carry around a printer. I would advise the printer as well, but you can actually send it straight to, um, you know, to the client if you wish. And you can just print it. And I'll show you how that turned out. The notes are down the bottom here. Uh, back door needs work and fixing. And we've got um, custom here, change lock on back door. So you can add your description in per item. So if you're doing something which is not on your menu, it's not a problem. So if you say, um, uh, reattaching a gate, uh, reattach back gate. You know, that's something you wouldn't have on your auto select um, everyday menus. You can put it in there, you can put a price on it. Um, and then you can also put previous notes down here. Everything is included in with that receipt. So the idea is that you give the customer one, you give the customer two, and there is your legal obligation filled. Um, they've got one for their payment, they've got one as a tax invoice. Now, the reason these are really cool these receipts is one they're smaller two um, often you know they get discarded which is a benefit um, three the information is written clearly um, it's presentable and a lot of companies are going this way one of the things is if you do leave them out in the sun they do fade so it's kind of like um, a disappearing invoice if you if you wish um, they are good they do work and you know it's legally acceptable um, and it's a little bit better than having a, a handwritten or, or screw, scribbled up type of invoice. You know, it's a bit hard to read or a bit messy. So it's a better, better system. So if you're looking at which system to choose, it's completely up to you. We're just showing you um, a bit of new technology here and the size of it. You know, it's quite small, battery powered, charge it up, just like this one. 
you know, these two devices here, plus your phone, is kind of what you can be carrying. And um, yeah, if there's been some help to you, that's great. Um, there's a lot of other systems out there like Square and things like that. We haven't found them very functionable. Um, having a dedicated FPOS machine is good. It's a bit of a shame we could not get this incorporated with this because they're exactly the same thing. This is just a, a, a thermal printer with a, you know, a bit of a tablet on it. Um, but unfortunately you can't use this as a thermal printer. I wish we could, it would save having to carry this around. But we found the easiest way is just to carry both. And um, yeah, so if you're not using a thermal printer for your locksmith in business, um, consider it. It might, might save you some time, might save you some money, make your receipts more presentable and um, help you out. Uh, it's a lot better than doing invoices. So that's the, th the three ways um, we kind of accept payment and how we process the payment. And if it's been some help to you starting up your locksmith business or if you're running a business and you want to move over to a system like that, um, it might be interesting for you. Once again, uh, the app I found to use um, this, well, first of all, this printer, uh, about six, seven hundred dollars. I'm going to be getting the cheap Chinese one soon. I'm going to be road testing that, see if that's, you know, usable. Because uh, six, seven hundred dollars, they're bloody expensive. This one here is kind of like drop and resistant proof. Um, so yeah, you can get the cheap ones, and they do work. Uh, the paper, that's another good thing I didn't mention. The paper on these, you just pop the bonnet, and you pop the bonnet here, and you're using kind of the the same, the same rolls. So I can just, you know, swap that one out there, run out of paper there, and swap that one there. You know, and they, they all they all work. So that's um, another benefit. Um, yeah, and the cheaper printer is coming. One more thing with this one, it is a high-end one, so it does have the card reader here. See the little door that pops open? None of which we're going to use because it doesn't integrate with our software. Uh, the software I'm using is just a cheap one. I'll probably update it eventually. Um, I'll just give you one last look at that. You find it in the Google Play Store. Um, I did try a few other ones, but I couldn't get them to into, I couldn't get them to put in the customer's name and notes and details. So this one I found usable and it's free. So this is Cash Sale POS. It can be down, downloaded to the cloud. It can be synced as well. You can email off your receipts. Um, so it is usable, um, just like this book here. When you write one, you want a second copy for the office and another copy on the on the backup. So you can completely do that with this system. Okay, thanks for watching.